Hello traders, if you're using index ETFs like the Qs, the SPY or IWM to gauge market strength, you are doing it wrong. Spend the next few minutes with me and I'll show you the right way. It's an easy crutch to wanna to use index ETFs like the SPY or the Qs to gauge the strength of the markets. They're heavily traded, everybody talks about them, but they're comprised of hundreds of individual components with unique weightings, and those weightings are where things can get a little misleading. To really understand the strength of the market at any given time, you have to look at unweighted participation. Are more stocks advancing or declining? Another word for that is market breadth. With market breadth, you can quickly see the constituent performance in percentage terms. So, for example, to visualize the percentage of names in the S&P 500 that are making new 14-day lows right now, use the ticker L14SP500. If you want to know the percentage of energy names making new 63-day or quarterly highs, use H63ENE. What do we do with this information though? Well, let's take a look at that SPY example. At the beginning of April, the percentage of names making new 14-day lows began ticking up rapidly as the price of the SPY was struggling to make a new high. This was a clear signal that strength was weakening under the hood with the 14-day low list acting as the leading indicator. As the percentage of names making new 14-day lows continues to increase, the price of the SPY slides, and then once it peaks out and begins to reverse, shortly thereafter we see a rebound in the price of the SPY. What about XLE? Remember in the last video on seasonality, we talked about how strong energy was historically in April of election years. Well, we see it in market breadth too. At the beginning of April, the percentage of energy names making new 63-day highs hit a peak of 40%. And if we zoom out, we see a clear correlation between this breadth chart and the XLE. Over the past two years, any time the percentage of names making new 63-day highs has reached 30% or more, it tends to be a precursor to a top in the XLE. Notice the bearish divergence. In the past two instances, the price makes a new high while the percentage of new 63-day highs decreases. Perhaps we should keep a close eye on the 63-day highs chart if the XLE goes on to make a new high soon. It makes sense, right? If the percentage of names making new highs or new lows is increasing, then ultimately the index or the sector should eventually follow. It's not a one-to-one -one relationship because of the weighting, but market breadth is the signal. It's your way to know when it's time to get defensive. Let's check out a few other ways to use it. First up, an example on the small caps. Here I've got the 14-day low breadth chart of the Russell 2000. When I add a 50 period moving average to this chart, I can see when the percentage of names making new 14 day lows is either above or below its average. And there is some real alpha in knowing this. To visualize it, I'll use multi-symbol view so that you guys can easily see the breath chart and the IWM chart at the same time. Lately, when the percentage of names making new 14-day lows drops below its 50-day average, it's a clear risk-on signal for the IWM. When it breaks above that average, it's a risk-off signal. This relationship suggests that we should be considering long positions in the strongest small cap names anytime the 14-day low list is below its 50-period SMA. And we can put this idea both to use and to the test really easily on the platform. Let me show you how. First, you can actually set an alert on the moving average on your breath chart. That way, the platform acts as your eyes and ears monitoring for those changes. It'll notify you when the percentage of names making new 14-day lows breaks above or below its average, and then you can use those alerts to either trade the IWM or the strongest names within it. A quick tip for you if you're looking to identify the strongest names, try adding weekly, monthly, and yearly percentage change values to your favorite favorite small caps watch list. Then click the top here to filter from strongest to weakest. The names with positive values for all three timeframes, those are gonna be your strongest names in the group. Now, lastly, I told you that we would put these ideas about market breadth to the test. So let me show you how it can be used as a confirmation layer in your strategies. 
Many traders like to look for oversold conditions as a way to try and time potential reversals. Whether it's a reversion trade or a pullback in an uptrend, there are many indicators that can be utilized to gauge that a stock might be about to bounce. In this example, we're gonna use Bollinger Bands and RSI. So for our entry, we'll define that the price is closed below the lower Bollinger Band. We'll also define that RSI is currently below 45. And on the exit, we'll use a simple two to one ratio for a stop loss and a take profit, stopping out if we lose 5% and closing our winning trade at a 10% gain. Now, the results of this strategy are underwhelming at best, but what if we added a breath condition? Instead of just looking for what could be a low based on potentially oversold readings of our indicators, let's also define that breath is actually deteriorating. To define that deterioration, we'll create another condition group and say that price closed greater than a constant value of 0.5. Here, where it says on current symbol, let's switch that to on other symbol and type in L14N100. With this condition, we're saying that at least 50% of the names in the NASDAQ 100 are at new 14-day lows. This is a capitulation as opposed to just a potentially oversold reading, and the results, they speak for themselves. First, we're taking 40% fewer trades, which means we're only getting in when it really counts. Then there's the return, a 56% win rate with a net gain of 73.5% when we include the breath condition versus a 39% win rate with a net gain of just 16.8% when we don't. If you're not yet using market breath as a filtering or monitoring layer in your current trading system, now is the time to start. And Trendspider's got you covered with over 1,200 symbols to utilize across the platform. As always, we hope you found this video helpful and we look forward to seeing you in another Trendspider technical analysis series video. Happy trading and we'll catch you next time.